Thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. A Palestinian woman attempted to stab Israeli border police at a checkpoint just north of Jerusalem this morning. But she was shot and allegedly killed before she could hurt anybody. The woman allegedly pulled out a knife and advanced toward a border guard, and nearby troops opened fire on her before she could reach him. Police claim they initially shot in the air, but she refused to stop and drop her knife, so they were forced to shoot at her. The woman was pronounced dead by paramedics at the scene, but she wasn't carrying any identification that indicated who she was. The attempted attack comes amid a major dip in the number of security incidents following months of almost daily terror attacks by Palestinians. 29 Israelis and 4 foreign nationals have been killed since October in stabbing, car ramming, and shooting assaults. It looks like the Israeli government is close to cutting a coalition deal, but nothing has been decided yet. In a late-night meeting, officials from the finance ministry worked with representatives of Avigdor Lieberman's Israel Beitenu party in an effort to iron out remaining differences on the party's pension demands. If approved, Lieberman will become Minister of Defense. Talks to include the Israel Beitenu party in the government have already stalled, but now a new obstacle has been raised by coalition partner Naftali Bennett and his Baita Yehudi party. While Lieberman is insisting on an agreement on pension reform for thousands of former Soviet immigrants, Bennett is insisting on the appointment of a military secretary for the security cabinet. Bennett says that his demand comes in light of lessons learned from the Second Lebanon War and the Gaza War, where he claims the security cabinet was not fully briefed. Bennett is now threatening to have his party abstain in the vote to include Israel Beitenu in the coalition, unless the matter is resolved. The city of Amsterdam is planning to give $11 million to its Jewish community as compensation for taxes imposed on Holocaust survivors who returned home to the Dutch capital after World War II. When the survivors finally made it back to the Netherlands, they were forced to pay taxes because their homes were left empty during the war. They were also made to pay back taxes for the years they had been taken away from Amsterdam. In 2013, a Dutch student discovered the taxes and demanded the city to make it right. Now Amsterdam will finally pay back the Jewish community as reparation. The city has suggested that the money should be put towards a Holocaust memorial monument or community programs. The Israeli-made app House is the official winner of the first ever Google Play Awards, which focuses on the best Android apps in the world. The home remodeling app was founded in Tel Aviv seven years ago by an Israeli couple, and it brings together both professionals and homeowners to help with the home remodeling process. Users can track design options by saving photos categorized by room type, location, and style, and then consult with top interior decorators. House already has 10 million Android users and is being hailed as one of the most successful projects launched by Israeli internet entrepreneurs. That's all for now. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.